So did you hear the one about the vampire who tortured his prisoners by playing the piano? <laughs> Turns out that his Bach was worse than his bike. <laughs> now you see, um, we give out awards uh, for our summer staff um, at the end of every summer. And I tend to win the award for the best dad jokes. You didn't know that about me. Now the great thing about the piano palooza is all the pianists are backstage, so they have no idea what I'm talking about right now. So I'll pretend not to see that pianist in the back of the hall. I have a few more to share with you. What do you call a snowman that plays the piano? Melton John. <laughs> What's the note that the husband left for his wife? Gone Chopin, Gut List, Bach and Minuet. <laughs> Why are a pianist's hands like lightning? They rarely strike the same place twice. <laughs> of course, we say this with great love. Uh, for the one night a year during the summer when we invite our pianists to spend so much time mentoring, performing, learning how to be entire orchestras with their ten fingers uh, to have the stage to themselves. And it is always a night of brilliant playing and it's invariably entertaining. So um, we're thrilled that you're all here to see our annual Piano Palooza. Even last year during our uh, virtual Institute. Uh, the pianists got together and solo works, and as you'll hear tonight, some piano four hands, some two pianos, and uh, even some piano eight hands. And you're going to see a lot of that this evening as well. So I hope that you enjoy the program. Um, before I uh, dash off, and I'm Bach and a few minuets, I do have to do my little ritual here of acknowledging those people who do uh, support the Heifetz Institute this year, including Jerome and Dina Kaplan, Jane and David Wyman Good, Jerry Dubit, Eleanor Pages, Judith Davidson, Janet Getz, William Vogt, Theodore Rose, and Maureen O'Sullivan. Enjoy the program, and thanks for being part of the Piano Palooza 2021. everyone here today um, and uh, Yoon and Nikki and I are very excited to play this overture from Rossini's Barber of Seville and uh, this is also a bittersweet moment for me because this is my last day here this summer my last concert and I've been reflecting back on these three weeks and thinking it's been really productive a lot of new music learned a lot of concerts played with wonderful artists and then I started reading that Rossini composed this entire opera in three weeks. <laughs> and I changed my mind. But <laughs> uh, the, the piece doesn't need much of an introduction. It's very iconic work that I'm sure all of you will recognize. And we're just excited to share it with you. So thank you.
Good evening, everyone. My name is Beiling. Um, the next piece I'm going to play is called Liuyang River, and it's composed by Chinese composer Wang Jianzhong. Um, the piece is based on a uh, basic, uh, very popular folk music. It sounds like. As you can tell, the piece is full of joy, so enjoy. <laughs>
so I'm very excited to be performing the second movement of Florence Price Piano Sonata in E minor. Uh, Florence Price was uh, an African-American female composer from Little Rock, Arkansas, who uh, by, the po by the time that she wrote this sonata, she was living in Chicago. And she had just, she, she won a composition contest called the Wanamaker Music Composition Contest. She won prizes uh, in two different categories, both for her uh, solo sonata and also first prize for her, her symphony in E minor, which the following year uh, was performed by the Chicago Symphony Orchestra, which was the first time that the uh, music composed by uh, a black woman had been performed by one of the major uh, symphony orchestras in the United States, uh, and that was in 1933. And she uh, composed this piece, I believe, in 1932, which is when she entered it into the competition. Uh, in her music, she often draws on a lot of traditional uh, African-American songs and dances, including um, the, uh, spirituals, uh, in many different forms, uh, in arrangements, uh, through uh, direct quotations sometimes, and in the case of this sonata, most likely through using um, melodic and rhythmic aspects of the spiritual and kind of weaving that language into a uh, into romantic uh, period piano textures. Uh, it's, a, it's a really uh, beautiful piece, uh, and I really fell in love with this piece the first time I heard it. Uh, and this is the first time I'm performing it and I'm very excited to share it with you. Thank you.
Good evening. <laughs> um, yeah, um, my name is Miki Aoki. Uh, there's another Miki, so I just want to say that it's very important we say our full names. So tonight is uh, Miki Aoki. And uh, the piece I'm playing for you um, is based uh, on a song by the Russian composer uh, Mihai um, Glinka. <coughs> And it was later arranged for piano by another Russian composer, Mili Balakinev. So this, uh, the words to the song uh, is written, uh, it's from the poem of a good friend uh, of Glinka. And I would like to read you that poem. It's obviously an uh, English translation from Russian. The poem is by Nestor Kukolnik, The Lark. Between the sky and the earth, a song is heard. An ending stream of sound pours louder, louder. Unseen is the singer in the field where sings so loudly above his mate the son sonorous skylark. The wind carries the song to whom it does not know. She to whom it is sung, she will understand who it is from. Pour on my song of sweet hope. Someone remembers me and sighs beautifully.
everyone. So my name is Jing, and today I have the kind of immense pressure of finishing the first half of the concert. And, and usually, you know how programming goes, you go from beginning uh, earlier and then later and then slightly later, and finally you have the kind of last composed music. But um, unfortunately, I think we entered too much into the spirit of the barber. And uh, the, the overture, I think, really uh, brought us into a whimsical uh, mood. So we're ending instead with some of the earliest music that's written for any keyboard instrument. And um, so as you can see on your program notes, he uh, was born in the 16th century. And the instrument that he would have composed for Mr. Uh, John Bowl is called the Virginal. And uh, I hope that uh, no harpsichordist friend of mine is watching this because a virginal is about, I think, uh, maybe one-tenth of the size of the modern piano and probably 30 times lighter and it produces. So I feel like there will be a, a mob coming outside to, to get me if, if my early music friends get, get, a, get a whiff of what I'm doing is kind of... Uh, really horrible to them. <laughs> um, but yes, uh, so the first piece I'm playing is a galliard, and that is a, a very, very old dance. It's very slow and stately, and it's in three. And there's a lot of room for improvisation, and that, that is certainly what they would have done in the day. And it's so old that by the time Bach was writing his suites, for various instruments uh, about a century later, a little more than a century, nobody was writing galliards anymore. So by then, the most popular dance uh, in three was the saraband, the slow dance. So, so this will be an interesting opportunity to hear the galliard. And after the galliard, I will play the king's hunting jig. And um, I don't know how he does it, but he's trying to evoke the timbres of the trumpet to, to announce the adventure for the king. Uh, but in the 16th century, it would have been this little, tinny little instrument. But because I'm being kind of a heathen creature, you'll get to hear the trumpets in full glory on this <laughs> instrument here. So please enjoy.
So one of the great things about being in a community this size um, is that you get instant feedback. You know, they used to call it, you know, in the, the, on the, the newspapers, you know, the, the rushes, you know, or like the overnight reviews. So here's the instant review. Joke's bad, tie good. <laughs> so I'll just have to save the jokes for a little bit later. <laughs> um, this is the time when we also talk a little bit about uh, what's, we're now actually officially halfway through the Institute. Uh, we're now on the other side of, we have three more weeks, three more amazing intense weeks, so we do hope to see you here. Uh, we have concerts this week on Tuesday, that's uh, tomorrow, um, with our next Stars of Tomorrow concert. Also, which means we these pianists have to go back to work tomorrow. Uh, Thursday, another Stars of Tomorrow concert. On Friday, two concerts. We now do these free concerts at uh, one o'clock in the afternoon at the Stanton Augusta Art Center. And uh, as I mentioned uh, last week, here on in, those concerts are gonna be devoted to the really intense chamber music study that our students have been doing here. Um, stop me if you've heard this before. Well, you can't stop me because I have the mic, but um, we, we uh, have groups that are here in different phases, groups A, B, C, D, and uh, now group A has uh, departed here. They're now studying online, um, but now this is gonna be sort of the final week for group B, so they'll be doing all of their chamber study, their really intense chair music rehearsals so that they can perform as their kind of final showcase concert this Friday um, at the Arts Center. These concerts are absolutely free. We do ask that you make a reservation in advance because seating is limited. Then Friday night, um, a concert that I've been looking to, forward to all season long uh, is one that we're calling Family Ties. And uh, it uh, will feature um, a number of interesting family connections here at the Hyvis Institute, really to kind of celebrate our 25th anniversary. You'll be hearing from uh, both the offspring of some of our longtime faculty members, as well as from a faculty member who was at the Institute in his very earliest years um, as a grad student and has now become one of the most respected and uh, in-demand professors of the violin. He'll be performing the Borromeo Quartet um, with another wonderful piece by a Virginia composer named Adolphus Hailstork, who this year just turned 80. Uh, he wrote this amazing string quartet based on the spiritual Swing Low, Sweet Chariot, and that will be also on Friday's Celebrity Series program. Our Hyphus Hootenanny is on Saturday night, and uh, I have to tell you that what a high note we had last Saturday with uh, Nathan Moore performing uh, with a string section of Hyphus students. It was really an amazing moment, and we have more great things in store for you this Saturday. Those are at the uh, Blackburn Great Hall, the Blackburn Inn. And then Sunday, uh, we'll have our Sunday matinee, and uh, that's right here uh, at two o'clock. Lots of great things ahead. We do hope that you can join us, and of course, remember, that uh, if you miss any of these concerts for a small suggested donation, you can uh, watch them all online on our YouTube and our Facebook channel. Now, I'm going to also give you a, f a fair warning. We have a big stage change that's going to happen after a couple of pieces, so I just might have to tell you a few more jokes. <laughs> Enjoy. Uh, so there are two of us on faculty and it creates a lot of confusion every single year. <laughs> I've been here four years. So I'm going to perform for you a piece called Bloom, written by my very good friend Brendan Randall Myers. He wrote it for me and um, Bloom is part of a five movement work called A Kind of Mirror, which is all for piano and electronics. And um, we actually record an album which is coming out at the end of August of the entire thing. It's about 45 minutes. And Brandon and I are very good friends. Uh, we went to Yale together about 10 years ago and been working together since, on and off. And uh, we share a lot of things in common. And one of those things is long distance running. So Brandon went through a phase, he's watching this right now, um, where he ran 20 miles every, like basically every day for about a year. And that's crazy. And that's not my kind of crazy. My kind of crazy is I uh, started running ultra marathons, which is, anything longer than 26.2 miles. 
So uh, about three weeks ago, I ran a 50-mile race in Colorado in beautiful mountains up at elevation. And it basically took from sunrise to sundown. But the experience of the whole thing just went by so quickly. But like paradoxically, I feel like I lived each moment very vividly. And I think that's like a really cool thing in life that you can experience. And music also does that in a certain way. It changes your perception of time, right? So because Brendan wrote this piece for me, it has a lot to do with that kind of long distance runner's flow state, uh, especially Bloom, which I'll play for you. And it's also very virtuosic and uh, it requires a lot of stamina in the player. And it's also kind of minimal and repeats a lot, but also it's constantly changing. Um, yeah, so you, I think you'll get a sense of that kind of flow state. It's also just a really beautiful soundscape that you'll hear through these speakers, the electronics track that Brendan wrote. Um, I think it might be a sound experience you've never had at high fits before, so I hope you enjoy.
again. Uh, so this, this next piece that we're going to play is the Petite Suite by Claude Debussy. And uh, he was quite young when he wrote it, just about uh, 27 years old. And uh, the first movement of this piece, which it translates to in a boat, or sometimes translates as sailing, has the, the most wonderful opening that always reminds me of that feeling when you're, you're on a boat or you're on the shore on the beach and the wind is blowing by and you're looking out into the horizon and your soul is just free and you're just completely joined with the expansiveness of the universe. And um, the second movement is procession. The third movement is a minuet, which is a, a Baroque dance has almost kind of a ghostly quality as if this uh, melody is being conjured up from the past. And the fourth movement is a really joyous ballet. And I, I feel about this piece in general that there's a youthfulness to it in a, almost a, a childlike quality in the best sense of the word that it's very pure and innocent and um, and there's just there's a purity of expression that is is so precious. So we're really uh, excited and thrilled to be sharing that with you today. Thank you.
A flat, B flat, G flat, walk into a bar. Bartender says, we don't serve minors here. <laughs> what happens when you drop a piano over a military base? A flat major. <laughs> what does a Stein weigh? About 1,200 pounds. All right, I'll stop there. <laughs> Uh, you know, I was mentioning earlier, and I, I get up here and I talk about the commercials and about the concerts that will all take place here, but uh, of course, one thing about uh, having an institute with, with these incredible young musicians is that we also realize that there are people who cannot get out to come to First Presbyterian Church or to the Blackburn or any of our other venues. So we spend a lot of time also going out in the community. Um, and I think this week is a good example. Today, um, our musicians came to uh, Brightview Baldwin Park, and it was the first time that many of them had heard live music in more than a year and a half. It was really a wonderful event. Tomorrow, we're going to have some musicians from Heifetz going to uh, perform at the Stanton Rotary Club. On Wednesday, we're continuing our partnership with... No small feat to get this thing on stage, I'll tell you. On Wednesday, we're going to be, uh, we've started this partnership last spring with our Air Ensemble uh, performing at, with Augusta Health. A lot of them were first uh, by Zoom, what we call bedside performances, but now uh, we're actually playing in the atrium every Wednesday, so we'll be having a performance there about 10 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. Um, Friday, we'll have some musicians at the Kids Camp for the Stanton Augusta Arts Center, and every Sunday, uh, as a, one of our ways of saying thank you to our hosts here at First Presbyterian Church, um, we always have some different hyphen students who are performing as part of the service. So if you come here for Sunday services, you'll also have a chance to hear our hyphen musicians. And again, uh, if you might have heard from some of our students when they come here for the, the Stars of Tomorrow, this is really part of our communication training about getting them out into different venues and interacting with audiences. And it's also really quite a thrill for them to start exercising that live performance muscle. Uh, we had a couple of people playing today that were actually making their first performances at uh, Brightview Baldwin Park. So it really is something um, for, we cannot underestimate, I think especially after the last year and a half or so, of just how important it is that you all, the role that you play uh, in supporting our students and the feedback that you give them is really so vital, whether it's here on stage or whether it's one of our outreach concerts. How are we doing? Just about there. Okay, a couple of great performances left uh, by Rachmaninoff and Mendelssohn uh, to close out our piano palooza. is Rachmaninoff's uh, Piano Suite Number no. 2. It was composed in 1901. Uh, it was a very difficult time for Rachmaninoff. Um, he, his first symphony was not very well received four years prior to that, so he was not doing very well, and this piece became the next triumphant uh, work that uh, he again gained confidence uh, to compose great works. So um, in the 1940s, uh, right before Rachmaninoff passed away, he was in Los Angeles, and he actually played this piece with Vladimir Horowitz at a house party. So um, today, Bailey and I are going to play the third movement from this work. Thank you.
good. I'm glad I made it to the overture. <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, it's, it's nice, this program. Book ended, we go from the barber to the ass. Yes. And uh, it's kind of, a, you can really hear sort of a puck all, all over this piece. And um, uh, Mozart, uh, sorry, Mendelssohn. Mendelssohn is like Mozart, uh, very classical, everything very precise. And, but for this overture, he brings out this special weapon. He, he kind of pauses everything for one moment uh, with this very special harmony and then restarts again. And this is, I, I feel like this is a kind of fitting and a magical end to what I hope was a magical evening. Thank you.